This is Jason McIntosh with McIntosh Applied Engineering. In this video, I'm going to cover the May 103 impedance measurement apparatus. The need for the May 103 is to measure the impedance of uh, devices with very large acoustical impedances. Since the impedance of a device is inversely proportional to its acoustic surface area, this essentially means that the May 103 measures the impedances of very small devices on the order of a few millimeters in diameter. The May 100 device measures the impedance of materials or devices from about a diameter of 10 millimeters to 25 millimeters. But due to its size, it's going to be challenged to measure very small devices. Uh, the May 103 has two variants. The A is for measuring very large impedances, up to about 220 uh, dB acoustic ohms. Uh, an example of this would be a non-breathable uh, membrane. Uh, the B variant is for also measuring large impedances, uh, not quite as large though, maybe up to about 180 dB acoustic ohms. An example of a material might be an open porous uh, 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 cover or something that allows air to flow through it. And the limits to the impedance that they can measure is actually frequency dependent, which is displayed in ARIES. Here's some pictures of what the 103 case looks like. And here is a system assembled. This is only containing the parts specific to the 103. Uh, here's a high intensity speaker from May. It couples to the 103 stack up here through a flexible vinyl tube, which helps reduce vibration, which uh, will improve the uh, accuracy of the measurement. The actual sample holder for the 103s is, is here, uh, where this cable is leading to. The bottom of the stack up has a microphone embedded in this. Uh, in this steel body. So here's the uh, microphone base with the, with the microphone embedded in it, the uh, flexible tube, uh, and here's the coupler that uh, goes to the microphone base, and this end goes on top of the uh, speaker driver. The May 103 sample holders are shown here. It ships with two of each. Here's two MAE 103As. Here's two MAE 103Bs. On the right side here are a close-up of what the 103A looks like. There's a microphone embedded in the sample holder. And then there's a small port, uh, which is the measurement port, that you will put uh, a sample over top of. Here's the 103B. It also has a microphone port and then a sample port. So you actually put the samples over this over this measure, measurement port. There is a 15 millimeter diameter line inscribed in the 103 sample holders. It corresponds to the inside diameter of this coupler block. And so you don't want to put samples outside of that 15 millimeter scribe line. Uh, and then finally, the other piece of this uh, measurement system is the MAE 206 uh, microphone amplifier, which is needed to supply uh, uh, power to the, the different microphones in the MAE-103 uh, apparatus. Here's some close-ups of uh, the 103A uh, with a sample attached to it. It is assumed that these samples will uh, adhere themselves to over the, over the measurement port. So uh, retaining apparatus is not supplied. On the right here is an example of just putting a piece of scotch tape over the measurement port and uh, taking a magnified picture of what it would look like. So this will measure the impedance uh, that the scotch tape presents to that, to that hole, to that measurement port. We'll actually do an example of this uh, later in the video. Then here's the underside of the 103 sample holder. There is a, a small volume inside, and this hole right here is the 
is the other side of this measurement port or this measurement port. Then here's the underbelly of that uh, microphone. Each sample holder is given a serial number. This is uh, 103A, as you can tell. Um, and each sample holder is given a volume calibration. This volume calibration is uh, important uh, for the accuracy of the measurements. Here, this uh, sample holder has a, a rear volume of uh, 149 cubic millimeters. This information will appear on the side of the sample holder, either in the form of a sticker as shown here, or engraved into the, into the side of the metal. One of the ways that the 103 is able to achieve its higher impedance range over the 100 uh, is just by the size of the volumes that uh, the material is dealing with. On the right here is the sample holder for a 100, an MAE 100 uh, prototype device. It has a diameter of one inch and has an extremely large volume that has to be driven by the, by, by the samples. But uh, the 103 is much smaller and can measure a much higher range of uh, impedances. This graph gives you an idea of how the impedance of uh, some material can vary as its diameter is increased. Here we have a material with a nominal resistance of 100 rails. Now its effective impedance is plotted in dB relative to one acoustic ohm for diameters from one millimeter to 25 millimeters. You can see that there's almost a 60 dB difference in the impedance across this range. The 103 is meant to operate on smaller devices with, with much higher impedances, whereas the 100, I mean, the May 100, is designed to operate more on smaller impedances with larger surface area. So the May 103 is meant to operate in the 140 to 200, 220 dB range, and the 100 is meant to operate largely below 140 dB or so. Then these other curves show how the impedance increases as you go to a 100 rail material and a 10,000 rail material. 10,000 rail materials are available, but they are a bit uncommon. Here's a block diagram of the system. I won't go through it in detail here. Uh, it's covered in the manual but uh, you will need uh, a sound card in your PC, uh, probably an external power supply to drive the, the speaker driver here shown in black, uh, and then the MAE-206 is provided separately. Here's an example of the, uh, of the 103 again and the 103B. They use different microphones, uh, and so they have different connectors on the end of them. The 206 amplifier has two different type of microphone inputs. This is a stereo uh, microphone amplifier, so there's two channels. They're labeled left and right to correspond to uh, sound card, left and right channels. Uh, on uh, the left here, you see it has 3.5 millimeter input jacks, which is appropriate for the 103B, which uh, uses a, a separate supply for the microphone. The 103A uses a, a phantom supplied microphone, so you'd use the B and C inputs for the 103A. Inside the flow impedance measurement module, uh, you'll need to specify that you're using a, a MAE-206 and that uh, whether or not phantom supply is going to be required for the different microphones that you've connected. Uh, whether or not phantom supply is required is marked on the cable in some kind of tag or engraved onto the side. So at this point, let's go to ARIES and create a flow impedance measurement module. We'll go to the setup section. We we'll want to make sure that we select the proper sound card that we're using for uh, recording and for playback. Uh, we want to select the 206, since that's what we're using for an amplifier. And we'll select the 103A as the device that we'll first calibrate. For the 103A, uh, the 206 requires phantom supply on both the left and right channel. These have to be manually selected. 
Also, you want to make sure that the temperature is appropriate for your environment. I'm at about 72 degrees. And now we'll go on to acquisition. So the next step is to do a calibration. In a separate video, I covered the sound card calibration. So instead of going through that again, I'm simply going to go to Files, Clipboard, load the sound card calibration that we had previously. So here's our sound card cal. Note that it's going from uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. We'll now go on to the microphone calibration that's required for each device. The 103A uses uh, microphones with sensitivities of about minus 46 dB. These calibrations don't need to be incredibly accurate, just a nominal value is fine. They're basically used to estimate the particle velocity through the sample. Usually these small samples have minuscule particle velocity through them, and so uh, they're not uh, typically characterized with uh, high particle velocities uh, to, to, to determine their nonlinearities. So uh, uh, if, if you're off by 3 dB with a mic cal, your particle velocity estimate will be off by 3 dB, but typically we're not looking at extremely large velocities anyway, so that, 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 that should be fine. For the MAE 103A, we want to use a calibration range on the order of 100 hertz to 6 kilohertz. So we'll return to Aries and enter that in, starting frequency of 100 to 6 kilohertz. And I'm going to turn log spacing off. Uh, we have a target pressure about 90 dB. That should be fine. And we're taking 200 frequency points, which should be plenty. Now, part of this calibration, it's critical to enter this volume. And the calibration volume for the apparatus we're going to be using is 205 cubic millimeters. So at this point, we can press perform measurement, and we'll get some data. And these curve fit parameters will be filled in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and start the measurement and probably pause the video. So this is a dialog box. Uh, telling us that this first calibration step requires that the measurement port hole be open. The 103A just has one calibration measurement with the port open. The B will perform two of them, the second one with the port plugged, usually with a, with a blue putty. So at this point, I'll go over to the measurement apparatus. Here we've got the uh, 103A. I'll put it on top of the microphone base. I'll put the top of the microphone sample holder coupler in place, and we're all set to go to do the calibration for this uh, 103 device. So I'll come back to Aries, press OK, and we'll wait for this to, to finish up. OK, that measurement took a little while. Aries repeats the measurement a number of times to make sure it has the optimal gain into the sound cards and that it does its best to achieve this target pressure. Sometimes it's not able to achieve it, and it keeps keeps trying a few times. So once the measurement's done, the measured data shown in blue is curve fit using these parameters here. Uh, you just need to make sure that the numbers you get are, uh, aren't too far from what you're seeing here. The manual describes the fact that you can drill the sample hold, holder uh, measurement port open to be a larger diameter if you so choose. If you do that, you do change how uh, these uh, parameters will will appear. So uh, uh, you will get a, a change in these if you if you do change the uh, measurement port size. But we're getting a reasonably good fit with the uh, measured data to the parameters that we have here. Once we measure, once we calibrate uh, a device, it's always good to save it to uh, a file, microphone calibration. So I'll type in uh, uh, 103 cal. So we'll be able to uh, get that back in the future. When you exit Aries, it will save this calibration data as a part of the configuration file. But uh, that, then that's fine if you're only using that one device time after time after time. You can rely upon it being there. But if you switch to using another device, you're going to want to uh, 
uh, your calibration uh, file for that new device in. So you're going to want to want to replace this cal data presently in Aries. So it's uh, it's best to uh, always save your calibration data to a file and know where it is so you can load it in at a later time. So here we've calibrated the 103A, and now we'll go on and we'll uh, calibrate the 103B. Uh, so we're going to return to setup. We're going to select 103B. We'll return to acquisition. Now the B is a little different uh, in that uh, the calibration range that you uh, calibrate over will determine all the frequencies that you can measure. So if you only calibrate from uh, uh, 200 hertz to 5 kilohertz, you won't be able to measure beyond 5 kilohertz after that. So uh, you want to make sure that the frequency range for B covers all the, all the, all the frequencies uh, that, that you're going to want to measure. That's not true with A. When, if you calibrate over 106 kilohertz, you can measure outside of that range. But uh, with B, you want to make sure your calibration range is uh, all the frequencies you're going to be interested in. These devices, they're, they're, they are small, and they don't measure down to super low frequencies well. So I wouldn't necessarily look much below 100 hertz or 50 hertz uh, when, when measuring this uh, measuring with these devices, whereas the May 100 can typically go, go down to 20 or 10 hertz uh, pretty pretty efficient, efficiently. So let's return to Aries. Uh, we have set this up. We've, done, we've gone to setup, and we have uh, selected the, the B. The B has a left channel sensitivity of minus 42 dB. Again, that's not terribly critical, but it's, uh, it's, it's worthwhile to enter in there. For starting frequencies, we're going to go to, down to 50 hertz, and ending frequencies, I'm not going to measure anything over 10 kilohertz. And number of points, I'm going to drop that a little bit, so we'll, this will run a little faster. And I'm going to select log frequency. Uh, log frequency weights the, the, this frequency uh, range to the lower frequencies, uh, which, will, which will improve our, our accuracy at, at low frequencies. I'll keep the same target value, and I need to find out what the volume is for the B and it's uh, 204 so I'll go ahead and enter 204 here I'll hit perform measurement and now this tells me set this up for uh, the B and leave the hole open so I've presently got the A in the setup I'll take that out and I will put the B on. Now the B uses the 3.5 millimeter adapter. So I'll go back here. I'll put this in place. And that reminds me that I did not change the phantom supply for the B. So I'm going to cancel here. Go back to setup. I'm going to turn phantom off for the left channel. Go back to acquisition for measurement and then go ahead and hit OK. So this will take a little bit again. OK, that took a while again. Uh, now Aries is telling us that it needs the 103B to have its measurement port plugged with putty. This is the second part of the calibration for this device. So we'll return to the setup and I'll pick up the B and I'll take a piece of classic acoustic blue putty and I'll place it over top of the, the measurement port. Now you don't want to push that in too much. You want it to seal. If you push it through the port too much, you will change the effective size of the rear volume. Uh, so you just want to cover it up and then kill that acoustic path. And now we're going to measure another transfer function as we reassemble it. We want to make sure that putty stays within inside that 15 millimeter uh, score line on the sample holder. Okay, measurement's done. And we can take a look at the calibration results. Uh, we need to curve fit a few parameters from the data again. Uh, and also, as a part of the calibration, we generate a blue curve called the K calibration function, both in magnitude and phase shown here. In general, what you want to make sure is that uh, your curves look something on the order of uh, what you're seeing 
here or in the manual. The exact shape isn't uh, critical, uh, but if you have any questions, please contact May and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll help you through it. If the curve fit doesn't look quite right to you, you can manually change these numbers and then just recompute re the, 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 the curves and see if you can get it to match the, the data in this top, top graph a little better. But uh, AIRS usually does a pretty good job. Uh, these recompute features are probably mostly, uh, mostly for uh, uh, expert users. So again, after you get a successful calibration, go ahead and go to Files, save the calibration. This time I'll save it to 103B file and return to acquisition. And now we're ready to make a measurement. So we'll go on to uh, sample impedance. Actually, I'm going to measure uh, uh, a piece of tape over top of uh, the 103 uh, uh, measurement port. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to load the 103A cal file in. Go back to setup. I'm going to turn phantom supply back on, reselect the 103A, go back to acquisition, and now we are uh, ready to, to do an acquisition. So I'm going to go from 100 hertz up to 10 kilohertz. I'll do 50 points. I, I won't do log spacing. Uh, I'm going to set. I'm going to initially set this particle velocity target as being really low. Uh, and I don't want to subtract the sample holder impedance. Now, uh, typically when you're using the May 100, you will want to subtract the sample holder impedance because the sample holder impedance is you know, usually on the order of uh, or, or, or close to the, the, the impedance of the samples you're measuring. But with the 103 devices, uh, typically the sample holder impedance is many orders of magnitude below the impedance of the of the uh, actual sample that you're measuring, so I uh, almost never uh, use uh, uh, subtract, subtracting the sample holder impedance. If you were to use this, you'd have to go to the sample holder impedance section and go ahead and measure the May 103 with uh, the port open. But uh, it, its impedance is so darn small, uh, you, it's pretty much uh, uh, can be neglected. So at this point, I'm going to uh, reconfigure for the 103A, set the B aside, and I'll connect the 103A up. And just to have something to measure, I'm just going to take a piece of scotch tape, tear a little piece off. and. Uh, Put that over the measurement port. Just lightly put it over there and we'll measure its impedance. It'll be very large. Put the stack up back on. And now let's return to Aries. Uh, we've already set the frequency range, so let's go ahead and hit perform measurement. This reminds us that we're using the 103A and we should set it up for the manual's instructions. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit OK and uh, perform the measurement. OK, the measurement's done. Uh, you can see the results in uh, blue here. The green curve on the magnitude plot shows the minimum impedance that the 103A requires for a decent measurement, but the scotch tape came in at about 185 dB or so. And if you look at the uh, uh, middle and imaginary parts down here, you can see that the tape is not acting much like a membrane, it has a mass reactance effect and a large resistance effect. Uh, this is because I didn't really put the tape down very firmly. I just kind of loosely put it over the hole, and there's probably a little bit of a leak around the tape. Uh, uh, a scotch tape over a one millimeter diameter hole has a, a bit too high of an impedance, even for the 103A to measure. So uh, that little bit of leak brought the impedance down a little bit and uh, put it within range for, uh, for the device. But that's how you would uh, measure, measure a sample. Typically, actual microphone covers and whatnot are much thinner than uh, scotch tape. So its impedance is going to come in uh, 
within the range of the device. Well, thank you for your time. All of this is detailed in the manual, and you're welcome to contact May if you have any questions. I hope you found this interesting.